bring this word tonight. So if you would welcome Luke. Come on up, Luke. Thank you. How wonderful. Good to see you all. I'm excited to be here. It's such an honor. Oh, man. Well, uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to do before I got started here. Um, some of you might be aware of what happened on Saturday morning, and uh, we got here 9 a.m., and we made this prophetic act that we were going to um, increase pretty much our storage houses for the more that God uh, has for us in, uh, in this church and also individually. And uh, I felt that with that happening, you know, uh, that, that carries a lot of weight. And because of that, there's a disruption, and the evil one doesn't like that. And uh, I just felt that we needed to um, really just keep declaring and bless the leaders of this house and bless their lives. Um, so what I wanted to do was, if you could stand, please. Um, if, if you wanted to, in the spirit or however you want to pray out loud, uh, just blessing the specific leaders. I have these ones by name that I want to, I specifically were on my heart when I, when I thought about this taking place. So um, I'm going to be blessing and praying then whatever you guys feel as well. So, so Father, we lift up the, the leaders of Kingdom Life, specifically Pastor Don and Trish and their kids, Jake and Gina. Bless them. Keep them, keep them safe and continue protecting them in all that they do. I bless, I bless Rick and Susan, and thank you for their hearts and uh, their generosity, and just continue to um, bless them in multiple ways, and, and thank you for them. Uh, I bless Dom Chumney and Dory as well. Thank you for uh, their diligence and their continual faith, and um, we bless them and their hearts. I pray for Angela and Chabelle as they uh, continue to walk in the, um, pretty much the office of the, of the prophet, continue to help them and, and speak to them in a way that they'll be able to understand. Uh, I bless Hilliard and Sally and uh, as pillars of this church who've been here for so long, continue to strengthen them and give them that um, young, vigorous life every new day in the name of Jesus. I bless Tom Hayes and Amber who are the real evangelicals of this church and bless them and continue using them to, to win the loss in the name of Jesus. I bless Kim and Dave and their son Isaac and their daughter Brooke. Bless the whole Boggs family and any sort of attack we bind in the name of Jesus and loose peace over them in the name of Jesus. I bless Miss Sherry and the whole um, hospitality team and I thank you for the community and unity that is growing because of her heart and for all the volunteers that help her. I bless Anita and the outreach team. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for them. I thank you for how uh, you put it on their heart and already the miracles and signs and wonders that we're seeing. And we thank you for the lives that are going to be saved because of that. I bless the worship team. Dave uh, Grundish, his wife Sarah, and their daughter Lydia and, and son Evan. Bless them in all that they do. Uh, bless Rosie and Israel and Isaiah. Bless their family and continue just the outpouring of your spirit in both those sons' lives to be men after your own heart. In the name of Jesus. I bless Joyce and Hannah. Be with them wherever they are. Continue speaking them and growing their faith. I bless the media team. I bless Matthew. I bless Chris. I bless Jake when he's here too. Continue to give them the strength and discernment they need to be able to serve with diligence and honor. I bless Maggie and the On Eagles Wing Ministry. Bless them in all the work they do. And um, thank you. Thank you that we have the, the honor that she, can, that she comes to this church, that she's part of our church family. And we thank you for her. And Father, lastly, I pray for... Phil and Patricia, bless them. Bless them in all that they do in their hearts of gold. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Kingdom Life. Thank you that we're part of this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Let's seal it with an applause. Amen. Cool. All right. Um, now, uh, I, I have a question. Does anyone have a sore lower back? Anyone? Yeah, okay. Can you stand, please? Can you stand, please? Yeah, Matthew in the back, too. Can you stand? Awesome. Um, uh, anyone have a sore right ankle? Sore right ankle? Okay. Um, a sore right shoulder makes it difficult to lift anything. Yeah, okay. Um, a right foot, specifically something with the toes. Does anyone have any of that? <laughs> okay. All right, nice. And this last one, um, I felt 
a little bit different. I felt that the Lord uh, said cancer. I'm not sure if there was a cancer report. If there is, if it's you or if it's someone that you know who's dealing with a, a bad cancer report, can you please stand as well? All right. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Um, I want to pray for you. But for the rest of the rest of them, can you, Kingdom Life, can you go to them, put a hand on them, ask them, yeah, Matthew, come down, get prayer. Cool. A- and ask them what's going on and just declare healing over them. All right. We'll give it a couple minutes. In Jesus' name. Awesome. We're not going to rush this. Oh, cool. Oh, he's wearing a Batman shirt? No way. Oh, I love Bruce Wayne. Awesome. Yeah, no problem, no rush. How many how many people feel better? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um I did get do you feel better? Oh, yes, sir. Max, do you feel better? Oh, amen. Amen. God, God's on the move over. That's good. Yep. That's so good. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I, I also did get the sense that if you received prayer at some point um, and didn't get the full manifestation as I'm talking, I think God's going to move and, and finish what he started and finish what he started in you. Um, actually, I do have one more question. If I didn't call anything out, is there anyone that needs, that is, needs a healing? that I didn't call out in specific. Is it you? Okay. Do you want to put your hand, just hands on her and quick? Yeah, just, just get her. Yeah. All right, just pray for her. Yeah. In Jesus' name, whatever that's ailing you, we just declare the Holy Spirit to come upon you and just complete healing. Oh, left shoulder. Oh, what are you going to do? Let you be able to use it to full functionality in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. Nice. Do you feel better? Oh, good. <laughs> amen. God is good. Yep, yep, yep. That's so good. Encounters, encounters. I love that. I love that. And that's kind of the theme for, for, for me today. Um, I wanted to go after the encounter more than I wanted to speak on a topic. And this goes for the people online watching. Um, the same way that God's going to be able to encounter us here in this room, he's going to encounter you exactly where you're at. And uh, it's going to be a powerful manifestation, and, and it's going to be something that um, is really, you're not going to forget. So, so, Holy Spirit, I invite you into the atmosphere to come and encounter everyone who's listening, who's watching this, and give them something they will never forget. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right. So, Romans 14, 17, and 18 in the New King James Version. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. The kingdom of God, quite simply, is how God does things. And he does things through righteousness, peace, and joy. Uh, the first one on this list, he lists as righteousness. And I don't think he listed it because it's higher than the other two. But the Bible is very detailed-oriented. And I think it was strategically put first because it's linked to the posture and condition of your heart. And if your heart is in a good place, it will allow you to be filled to overflowing. And this overflowing will actually strengthen the pillars of your faith and be able to be able to have more in your walk with Christ. Uh, so the word righteous comes from the Hebrew word sedek, and it is used 442 times in the Bible. The Bible is filled with this word and has different circumstances throughout, but the one I want to look at is in Hebrews 1.8 in the New King James Version, which says, But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Now, I, I'm a, I, I used to love history, you know, but I know from experience that it's not the most popular class and it's easy to have fallen asleep. But if you can think back to what your uh, teacher might have taught you, think back to the old kings. And I want you to imagine what they, what they look like, well, a King Louis in France or King William in England. Uh, and imagine what the crown on their head looked like. Imagine what the throne looked like and what they were dressing in the jewels and everything. And if, you, if we were to put them all together and we were to imagine what we're all thinking, it's all a little bit different. But one of the commonalities throughout all the kings in history is that they all have a scepter. Now, this scepter was to display authority, power, and favor in their kingdom. One of the best examples that we find this use in the Bible is actually in Esther. Now, a quick recap of those who don't know the story of Esther. Esther was uh, a young Jewish woman who lived in uh, the occupation of Persia under the Persian king Xerxes. And King Xerxes kind of had a falling out with his wife and exiled her, divorced her, and needed a replacement. So through uh, a little matchmaking, uh, Esther ends up rising and becoming the queen of Persia. And it all goes well until it is realized that uh, one of the advisors for King Xerxes has a plan to kill all the Jews. And the only one that can save the Jews is Queen Esther. And she uh, risks her life and through a gallant effort is able to save the Jews and they all live happily ever after. So that's the story. But the verse I want to look at in particular uh, is Esther 4.11. And it says, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes in the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death. So when Esther is deciding and trying to muster up some courage to go talk to Xerxes, she, she realizes that Xerxes is not so much of a social guy. If you were to walk into his throne room without an invitation, you die. However, as the verse says, 
except the one whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. And that's where she has the courage, walks in, and he shows the favor with his scepter, points it towards her, and the rest is history. Now, the way you were imagining the king earlier, I want you to have that same picture in your head. But this time, I want you to imagine that that is King Jesus there. And he has that scepter in his right hand, and he's pointing that thing right at you. And he's telling you today that I love you, that I see you, and you have been approved by me. You have access to the king of kings. But then it gets a little bit better. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him, Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So not only does God approve you, and show you favor, you are actually the authority and power that he uses to help govern his kingdom. You are that scepter. Righteousness is more than just doing good things. I know a lot of good people who do a lot of good things. Righteousness is for those who believe. Um, When righteousness gets talked about, sometimes we can disqualify ourselves. Think about the decisions we made in the past. Think about um, the choices. Think about everything, all the junk, all the junk. And when we think about that, we can immediately think, you know, I am not worthy. And I, and I am not righteous. But I'm telling you today that a righteous person, a righteous person is someone God can give power and authority to. And he already has said that about you. All he needs for you to do is have some courage and believe. So would you stand, please? So I want you to close your eyes, put your hand on your heart. And I want you in your heart, in your mind, however you need to say this, I want you to declare that over yourself. I am a righteous person. I am a righteous person. And I just want you to take some time. If there was anything that might have popped up, stopping you from believing that, that is a lie from the devil. You online as well. If you, if you think that is not true about you, that is a lie. And we come against that in the name of Jesus and come in agreement with what Jesus said. You are a righteous person. You are his righteousness. Everyone in this room is his righteousness. You are a righteous person. So thank you, Lord. Thank you that um, because of your sacrifice on the cross, we are righteous. And we just come in agreement to what you said about us, and we believe it with our whole hearts. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated, sorry. Oh. The next reality of the kingdom realm is peace. Now, as I'm talking to you about peace, you're going to start feeling a weight off your shoulders a little bit. That's how powerful peace is. It, I find it in my experience, it's one of the quickest acting um, gifts, presence of the Spirit, because we live in such a chaotic world, and God is just right there to move, and peace is usually the first thing that comes to be able to kind of relax us. So um, as I'm talking a little bit, um, don't be surprised if you feel your shoulders drop, if you feel the load kind of going off, and, and just as I kind of just want to release peace over you. And that the peace will just enter the atmosphere. And that is the, the, the encounter that he has for you right now. Um, in Philippians 4, 7, in the New King James, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So in the same way, that which is annoying you on a daily basis, we all have our everyday lives. We all are part of this world, and we all have to find our way in it. And it's difficult. It's difficult sometimes. And because of that, there might be some worry. There might be some anxiety about what comes next, about how I'm going to get through it. And I, but I'm here to tell you that you do not have to live with that. And that is not the will of God for your life. He wants you to freely receive peace. So sitting right where you are, I just want you again to put, close your eyes, 
Put your hand on your heart. And just take a few moments and take a deep, deep breath. Inhale the, the presence of peace that's in the room. And I know it's entering online to you who are watching as well. And I just want you to thank the Lord for the gift of peace. And once again, if anything pops up in your head that wants to disqualify you, that wants to that torment you and cause any issues, I just want you to speak over that thought and declare the peace of God over it. And you're going to find yourself in his arms, in the green pastures, by the silent waters, and your soul will be restored. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this gift. We thank you for that peace. We thank you that we can all sense it. We know that you're, you're manifesting yourself in that calm. Those in the room and then those online too. And if there's anything, anything that's hindering that, we come against it and just speak peace over it in the name of Jesus. And now just touch them. Touch them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So we have this peace. We feel it. We know it. It feels good, right? But now there's something that he has us do with it. In Ephesians 6.15, in the Passion, it says, Stand on your feet alert, then you will always be ready to share the blessing of peace. What you just experienced is what the world is lacking. The encounter of peace to overflow you with more than enough is so you, you can spill on those who don't have it. We sang it earlier. It says it in this verse, where you stand is on holy ground. And peace enters the room the moment you enter. Matthew 5, 9 in the New King James Version says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. If you want to excel in life, if you want to be promoted in what you, um, your occupation, your career, wherever you're at, whatever stage you are in life, take this gift of peace and display it for everyone to see. Because everyone now, especially, is looking for the peace in the calm of this storm. Peacemakers are rare in culture, and what you have just experienced is the longing and hope of many in our society. So be a peacemaker. So Father, I bless the people watching, listening, and, and, and I just pray that um, they're able to, tr to have that in their, in their mind when they go out and interact with people, to be a peacemaker, that they don't get offended, that they don't um, really get annoyed with the different things that take place and that the worries and cares that happen that we will just brush off them like water on a duck's back. So I thank you, Father. I thank you for the group of peacemakers in Jesus' name. Amen. The last piece is joy. <laughs> and joy is sort of the glue that ties it all together. Um, in Colossians 1.27, it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And with this knowledge, we know that God released the Holy Spirit, and he is inside every believer. So once again, I want you to put your hands on your heart and acknowledge that the living God is inside of you. And you're going to start feeling kind of joyful, because that is the Holy Spirit. who's pretty, he's pretty happy that you're acknowledging him. Um, keep doing that, but I want to read this verse, 1 Peter 1.8. It says, Whom... It says, Jesus whom, not been, who have, sorry, Jesus, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory. You not see it, but you believe it. You believe that Jesus and the Holy Spirit's inside of you. And because of that, joy gets released. So if you ever need some quick little joy, stop. Recognize that the Holy Spirit's inside of you. And joy will be released inside of you. 
Um, I do think that as I keep talking here a little bit more, that joy is going to start breaking out a little bit more. I think it's going to be a little bit more laughter. I think it's going to be more smiles. And however that has to manifest, you know, let it, let it ride. <laughs> let it ride. Um, but the big thing I want to tell you in this is uh, give yourself permission to be joyful. Um, it, it, sometimes it's a little difficult in, um, in public or wherever you're at. You know, that's not me. Um, but give yourself permission to have, to have joy. Um, John 16, 24 says, Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you'll receive that your joy may be full. This was asked so that it's, it's God's will, but his ultimate desire of asking for something is that you may be joyful. So he wants you to be joyful. Um, <laughs> this is what he wants. He wants you to be filled with joy. So allow yourself to be happy, to smile. It's a good day to be happy. It's a good day to be happy. It's a good day to have joy. Another reason to give yourself permission is that it's healthy. In Proverbs 17, 22 in the Passion, a joyful, cheerful heart brings healing to both body and soul. And the one whose heart is crushed struggles with sickness and depression. So that verse tells me that you have two options. You can either give yourself permission to be joyful, to be happy and to laugh, or you can uh, struggle with depression. You can struggle with it, which is very real, but it's a choice. It's a choice. So if you could stand once again to your feet. Put your hands on your heart once again. Father, Father, thank you. Thank you for joy. Father, thank you for joy. Thank you for permission to laugh, permission to smile, permission to be happy in the midst of everything, God. You are so good. It is your desire for us to be joyful, Father. I thank you. I thank you, and I release joy on all those listening, all those watching online, that they may encounter your joy in a special, special way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? There you go. <laughs> Just like that. Yep, that's exactly, yep, that is joy. That is joy manifesting itself. And you have permission of God to laugh, to be happy. Yes, more in the name of Jesus. <laughs> more in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, that's heaven. That's heaven. Righteousness, peace, and joy. You are made righteous. The peace of joy, that, uh, the peace that passes understanding. And then the joy that we have permission to experience all the time. All the time. And that's the kingdom life. And that's what God wants for you and for everyone listening. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for how easy it is to access heaven. I thank you for how, uh, how you just want to release that in our lives, and how you just want that to manifest yourselves even more. This was just a preview of what was going to be taking place in each one of these people's lives. I pray that you take that, you multiply it, and you increase it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for how you care and how you want to keep growing us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, let's give him a hand. Yeah, Lord, that was good. Yes, let it out. Amen. I don't know if we have any, is there any visitors in here tonight, by any chance? Any visitors? Okay, online, thank you for visiting us tonight. We praise you and thank you for your faithfulness. Put a note in the comment field of where you're from. We would appreciate that very much. Before we go, you get a chance to give into the kingdom. The giving stations in the back, we have a box. We also have the electronic version where you can go and use your debit card. And when you go, bless it that the Lord will multiply it immensely. 
Let me pray here. Father, thank you. Clearly, just like Jacob said, you are here. You showed up. You did mighty work tonight, Father. And I thank you for that. The love that you have for your children was clearly on display. And I thank you for that. Thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We pray now that you bless all these offerings and gifts. Bless them a hundredfold. Let them come back just like your word says. Back to them, Father, so that they know that they know how much you love and care for them. Now as we go, protect us and keep us safe. And just like Luke said, we take you with us. We take heaven with us. And we can release heaven, that peace and the joy. And people will know how much you love us, how much you care for us. So we thank you for that. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Lord bless each one of you.